Hello, this is Vicki Jervikis at the Greater Gainesville Chamber of Commerce, and we're delighted to be joined by Sherwin Henry today, one of our candidates for our special election for the city of Gainesville. That'll be held on November 16th. And we're gonna have a chat with Sherwin and give us uh, a chance to get to know him a little better uh, before we get started on the election. Sherwin, hi. Hi, how are you? Jump right in, very good. Jump right in and tell us a little bit with your introduction and then we'll have a few questions for you. Okay, um, I'm Sherwin Henry and yes, I am a candidate for Gainesville City Commission at large seat B. Uh, let me start, first of all, uh, just giving you some personal background. I'm a native of Gainesville, Florida, uh, graduate of the Alachua County School System. As a matter of fact, my senior class was the last class to attend Lincoln High before the big integration uh, or desegregation movement there as well. I'm also a graduate of Santa Fe now college, then it was Santa Fe Community College class of 73, as well as a 1983 grad of the University of Florida. I have my degree in food science and I'm a retired uh, senior biological scientist. My area of research was in monoclonal antibody production. And with the advent of COVID, I'm quite sure that you've heard talk about monoclonal antibodies. Um, one caveat though is I, I am a graduate of Leadership Gainesville class 25 as well. Um, and I really enjoyed uh, that experience. And the reason that I'm running for the Gainesville City Commission, number one, um, because of the madness that's going on at City Hall, the lack of leadership, the uh, lack of employee morale as well. Um, and to be frank, there are some uh, things that I would like to finish that I didn't get a chance to do as I served as the District 1 Gainesville City Commissioner. And what I bring to the table, number one, is 25 years of experience of working in the community. Um, I've served on numerous boards presently. I'm serving on the Neighborhood Housing and Development Board of Directors, as well as the Library Trustee Board. I am a former member of the Eastside CRA Advisory Board before they disbanded everything and reorganized it into the GCRA. And previous to that, actually, I served on the uh, MTPO Metropolitan uh, Planning and Transportation Organization as well. Um, the uh, Block Grant Committee, Citizens Advisory Committee for Community Development. And I'm also a founding member of uh, a nonprofit the East Gainesville Development uh, Task Force, which changed its name to the East Gainesville Development Corporation. But more importantly to me, this election represents the, the future of where Gainesville is headed. Um, there are um, numerous considerations, um, numerous things that really, uh, in my opinion, need to be not only talked about, but policy uh, needs to be developed to really take care of this city uh, in the future. Uh, my concerns are the city's budget for one, number two, the uh, promotion of small and uh, medium-sized businesses. Number three, we need to actually develop new revenue streams for the city as well. And um, really, I'm just interested in answering your questions and having the uh, chamber community and those that watch this uh, just get more insight as to who I am, not only as a candidate, but as a person. Very good. And I think you'll find that the um, you'll be able to uh, expand on some of your points with our questions. And I yeah. do want to say that uh, no, none of the candidates got the questions ahead of time. So but it is uh, it's timely how um, how some of the answers flow right into each other. So let's let's jump right in with question one. And again, this should this should go well considering your introduction. 
What do you perceive are the three most important concerns facing Gainesville right now? The three most important concerns right now um, are number one, governance. Um, we have lost the confidence of the citizenry at large, and it's gonna be very important, the person who is elected um, really brings some maturity experience and knowledge to the city commission, but must also be able to build consensus. Number two, the budget. It's very important that we get a handle on the city's budget to plan for the future. We, we can't continue to um, look to GRU to fund city government. Um, the city uh, commission has somewhat started um, what, what they've recognized that we can't do that to a degree and that they are reducing the general fund transfer by $2 million for the next few years there. But we must develop new revenue streams because we cannot run our city um, off the backs of the citizens. We, we, we can't tax our way out of it. And we can't, again, uh, totally just depend on GRU to support us as well. And number three, we must make Gainesville a city that really um, is inclusive and offers opportunities for families to move to the next level. And what I mean by that is that we have to really promote job development and business development so families can support their families, can provide some of the wants as well as the needs. And so for me, that's just very important that we are able to put families in a position to become homeowners and even become business owners if they so desire. But we cannot become a city of the haves and have nots. We must produce policy that's going to give anyone that desires to move to the next station to have that opportunity to do so. Very good. Um, and that will lead in beautifully to the next question, which is what would be your top priorities and projects if elected? Well, um, as I left the city commission in 2012, I advocated even before then that we needed as a city to look inward. Um, I, I felt that there had been enough resources devoted to the city growing west and downtown and the East Gainesville community um, are really ripe for redevelopment. And what we really need to do is get serious about um, redevelopment in our intercity as well as the, the East Gainesville community. Um, and I believe that the GCRA is a vehicle, number one, that can assist in that because the GCRA actually was, was birthed from the, the, the county deciding that they should not continue to invest millions in the College Park area because the College Park area is really a great example of tax increment dollars and what can happen when you take a neighborhood that is economically underdeveloped and invest in that neighborhood to, to, get it on, to get it on its feet economically. Well, College Park is that glowing and, and, and bright example of what can happen. And so the county, to me, and I give them credit for pushing the city to do this, they wanted to take those same dollars that they were investing in College Park and distribute it or have it reinvested in those areas that were still struggling economically. So the agreement was that the county put 35 million in and the city put 35 million in, and you would take that 70 million to then reinvest it in those um, economically depressed areas. And it seems as though progress has been slow in doing that, but that's one vehicle. 
The other vehicle is, is uh, developing policy that encourages small and medium-sized business growth as well. And, um, and, and because we have to, as a city, in order to take care of our residents, we have to create new economic opportunities, um, not only for businesses, but for families. There's no way that we can complain about some of the um, juvenile delinquency that we have in the city and parents are having to work two, two and a half, some maybe some three jobs to take care of their families because that puts families in the position that there's no one home to take care of the children. You know, so that's um, what you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't complain about, you know, having kids becoming part of the uh, juvenile justice system, but then parents are having to work and there's not that parental support or uh, that parental authority figure there in the house at the at the needed time that there needs to be. So we have to put families in a position that they can not only provide for their families, but also be there to give that parental support to their children as well. And to me, um, as I've stated before, there needs to be the political will to actually do those things, but we also have to foster partnerships because city government won't be able to do it all, but what we can do is partner with those entities who can do some of the things that we find um, that is needed to make our city the city that I envision that it can become. Very good. All right, well, now this next question will um, um, kind of bring back to your opening statement and give you a chance to chat a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. the, city, the city of Gainesville has experienced unusually high turnover, both on the commission and with staff. Right. What skills would you bring to this office that might make a difference there? Well, the first skill I would bring is common sense. The second skill I would bring is patience. The third skill that I would bring is being a listener. And if I can add a fourth skill, the fourth skill would be maturity and working together, collegiality as well. And that's what I'm not seeing. I'm, I'm missing the leadership. I'm missing that level of maturity. And I'm missing the um, collegiality, or if you want to say it another way, the mutual respect between the commissioners that are now serving. Very good. All right, and then now this is another question that uh, you probably have a little more unusual insight than most people. Mm -hmm. um, COVID-19 continues to present issues within our community and our state. Right. What actions do you think we need to take locally to help us move forward? Well, the first thing, um, it's number one, education. Um, I know uh, COVID-19 and you know, conversation about mandates and so forth um, have been a lightning rod, but we need to continue to educate um, the seriousness of this virus, but also too, to have them understand the health ramifications. And secondly, to understand that when it comes to the vaccine, it's not so much of being vaccinated for yourself. Um, for me, I'm a believer that I am my brother's keeper. And not only that, um, we also must keep in mind our families because there is a population out there that's um, suffering from the um, the effects of COVID that they, they have no say in. And I'm talking about the children, uh, really. Um, our kids uh, from infants to 11 years old, they can't be vaccinated. And so they're at the mercy of, of, of us supposed to be mature adults to keep them safe. And so it's gonna be very important, number one, to educate, number two, to dispel the fears and, and doubts as to um, the importance 
of not only taking care of one's self, but also having the compassion that you care about the next person that you don't want to in, infect them and, and threaten their lives. And then there's also the other class of uh, citizens that we need to really think about, and that's the senior citizens and the immunocompromised citizens as well. And so it, it's really gonna take a concerted effort. It's, it's, it's gonna take, again, everyone listening and talking to each other and not talking at each other. Because right now, that's what it seems to me that um, the majority of us are kind of talking at each other, digging into our side of what we believe instead of just stating what the facts are, educating, and then coming to an informed decision as to how to proceed. Very good. Um, okay, and then our last question is uh, is direct, I think, and it says, why should members of the business community support you? Members of the business community should support me because if you go back and look at my record, I've been um, a longtime supporter of business development, of the business community. And Gainesville's economy would not be what it is if we hadn't had those who have had the courage to decide, I want to work for myself. I want to start my own business. I'm going to invest in myself and I'm going to take a chance and start a business. And, and hopefully because I am providing great service because my customers see that I care and doing the best job that I can, that I will be successful. The university, Santa Fe College, North Florida a Regional Hospital, as well as Shands or Taka Charlie or the criminal justice system that exists cannot employ everyone. And if you think about it as well, um, when you look at trades, for instance, or when you look at the skilled positions, um, those businesses have helped a number of families move from either poverty or almost poverty to what you would say middle class as well. And that shows you the importance of the local business community and what it has done to not only change the lives of families in this city, but also to what it has done to make the city of Gainesville the enriching and city of opportunity, not only that it is, but what it can be even more. Okay, very good. Well, those are the uh, last of the questions. So now, as I said, you've got a couple minutes now to uh, bring up anything you didn't get a chance to, or just to wrap it up and bring us home. Okay. Um, first of all, let me start by um, saying to you that I really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you to answer your questions. And I firmly believe that I am the best candidate, number one, because I do bring a level of maturity to the city commission. Um, if you followed me as I have served not only in this community, but as a city commissioner, you know that I have been a very reasonable and common sense thinker. And not only that, I listen and I understand that I serve the citizens of this community as well. Secondly, I can build consensus. I was a district one city commissioner and I was able to get a number of things done from my district that others would have just given up. And, 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 and that's the thing about me, I don't give up. Yes, I served as district one and I've even run for mayor and I uh, ran again for district and here I am again because I'm not one that runs from challenges as well. And to me, the city right now needs somebody that's going to be um, a sound, thoughtful, and steady person 
to guide my colleagues. I have the historical knowledge as well on serving on the city commission because anybody that comes on the commission that's new, they're gonna have a learning curve of two, if not three years, depending upon how much they've been involved in this community as well. And also for me, having um, been born and raised here, knowing where the city of Gainesville has come from to where we are now, I think that historical knowledge is really going to pay great dividends as well. And so um, I just have this vision of where I know our city can go. I'm going to uh, do my best to articulate that vision, to build consensus among my colleagues, to help me and ask the citizens to join me to get Gainesville to where we are a city that's inclusive, where we are a city that offers opportunity for all its citizens. And I believe firmly this election is an election that will greatly direct our future as to where we go as a city. And I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of, again, serving the citizens of Gainesville. And I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much. And thank you for spending the time with us today. And again, at the Greater Gainesville Chamber, we encourage you very much to exercise your right and get out and vote on Tuesday, November 16th. Thanks again, Sherwin. Hey, thank you.